Good morning, everybody. This is a uh, Wild Bill, also known as the Paper Plate Chef. For all of you who enjoy my uh, videos and pictures about the different foods that I cook sometimes, and uh, most of you know I like the outdoors and I like to cook wild game, deer, turkey, duck, geese, the fish we catch. But I've got a surprise for you today, and uh, I think a lot of you are going to probably think, ooh, but before you think, ooh, I want you to think about something. When you go out to eat, a lot of times we don't know what we're eating. I was reading the other day that a Little Caesars pizza has like 26 different ingredients in it. And some of those I couldn't even hardly pronounce. But what we're eating today, I promise you, you know the ingredients. Now if I can get my lovely assistant to come over here and show you guys what it is, then I'll explain to you what we got going on. Now that right there is a coon. Yep, a coon. Rachel and I yesterday went on an old-fashioned coon hunting. It's obvious that we were successful with one coon. So what I've done is I've soaked this coon overnight in some salt water in the refrigerator to pull some of the blood out. And now I'm going to quarter it up and I'm going to boil it. Probably at least two times, maybe three. And the reason I do that is I want to get the fat off of it because you don't want coon fat. You might want hog fat, you know, if you eat pork. You want some beef fat and a ribeye, but you do not, trust me, want any fat on a coon. So I'm going to do my best to get all the fat off. And then when I get through with that, I'll come back to you. All right, folks, it's the paper plate shift. I'm back. I've cut my coon up, and uh, what I'm doing is I'm boiling him now. And what I want to show you is this is what you're looking for when you're boiling your coon. If you'll look real close, you see those skimmings that come up on top. That's fat. And I'm going to boil this for about 30 minutes, and I'm going to turn it off, and then I'm going to pour this off, and I'll put clean water in there, and then I'll boil it again. And while all that's going on, over here in my crock pot is I've cut up some potatoes, some garlic, and I'm cutting some onion. I've put some beef stock in there, uh, some salt and black pepper. I'm going to get that going. So while this is boiling, this is cooking my potatoes and stuff down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the meat off the bone of this coon, and I'm going to add it to this crock pot. Now, once I get the, this done boiling, this coon meat will be cooked. So all I have to do is put it in my crock pot for just a little while. You can leave it in there a couple hours if you want because it's not going to really matter. But you want it to soak in some of the flavors of your beef stock and your garlic and your pepper and your onions. And, and, and then, I'll sort of thicken it up a little bit. <clears throat> and then it'll be ready to eat. So when I get to the next round, which will be pulling the meat off the bone. I'll show you guys what it looks like and when I add it to this. And then later on today, about supper time, we'll sit down and we'll have a meal. Thank you, guys. All right, folks, it's the Paper Plate Chef back with you again. We have got to stage three. The coon has been boiled twice. I've gotten all the fat off of it. If you'll look right here in this pot, this is some water that's left over after the second boiling. If you'll look closely, you can see that fat. See that? How it's starting to cool. See, that's what you want to see in your water. This is pretty much done. As you can see, I'm picking the bones. And if you'll look real closely, this is what you want to avoid in your food. You don't want that fat around that joint. That's one of his, probably his hind leg. You don't want that in your food, so you pick the meat around that. And you want, want your meat to come out like that. This is the backbone. That's the back straps. We'll pick that meat completely off those back straps, and we'll add that to this pot over here that we've earlier started in our crock pot with our carrots, onions, and garlic. It's done cooked down. The carrots and the uh, potatoes and all are soft. We've got a good roux that started. 
So we're at the point now that we're going to start putting our meat into the crock pot. Like I said earlier, once you boil this for a couple of hours, and it's one o'clock right now, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe I started this from a, just a raw coon right out of the refrigerator around 9.30. So here it is, one, and we're to this point right here. So that gives you an idea of how long it takes to get to right here. We're basically done now, except for pulling the meat off this bone. And what I'm going to do right now is my lovely wife has never eaten coon before in her life. And she's a little apprehensive, to say the least. But I'm going to let her try this so you guys can see. And I want her to promise us that she's going to tell us, to the best of her ability, what she honestly thinks about this coon when she tries it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap places. And I'm going to present y'all with my beautiful wife. Y'all all know is Rachel. Okay, so here goes. And this is just a little bit of boiled coon. Like I say, the coon is done. It's been boiled. All right, so here we go. I got a piece right here. It's good. Believe it or not, it tastes like tastes like roast beef for real. Don't taste like chicken. Tastes like roast beef. I think it's doable. I like it. Okay. Now, you told me to brush my hair before I did this. I'm eating coon for crying out loud. Why does it matter if my hair is messed up? But anyway, we did it. Okay. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said earlier, sometimes what we perceive as not edible is actually pretty good. There's one ingredient right here. Coon. Now, we do have some garlic and onions and potatoes and stuff in this. But this is just coon. And I want to remind all of you that in Genesis, the book of Genesis in the Old Testament, in chapter 1, I believe around chap uh, verse 26, 27, somewhere in that, and then you can get your Bibles out. I'm close. I'm a, that God creates all the living creatures of the world. This is right after he's created you and I. And he gives us dominion over all the creatures of the world. And as we look at this food right here, one thing that I am absolutely thankful for is the fact that God has given us dominion over his creation. And when you take part in God's creation and you give thanks to him, that's the part that I enjoy the most. So when I get done with this picking this coon, the next time I see you, we'll have plates. We'll be ready to eat. We're going to cook some biscuit. we got some black-eyed peas right here that's fresh out of the garden from last year. And we're going to sit down. We're going to say grace, and we're going to eat our supper. See you next. All right, folks. We made it to the last part. All the prep is done. Our plates are fixed. And, yes, they're on paper plates because I am the paper plate chef. We're having treetop stew with black-eyed peas and biscuits and it looks awfully good a little bit of rice i know you're not supposed to eat potatoes with rice but i like both and i don't care about two starches and one sitting i'm going to have a little rice it helps soak up the stew a little bit but i've enjoyed sharing this with you guys today and um we're gonna get ready and sit down and eat now it's uh 2 30 in the afternoon and it's supper time so we're gonna say our blessing and I want each of you, if you want to see us cook something different, you know, say what you want us to cook and we'll do it. But right now we're going to pray and eat supper and thank you and God bless you. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for this day and we thank you, Lord, for the many blessings and we thank you for your creation and allowing us to take part in it and we give you thanks and praise and glory for that. Lord, but most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who came here and lived amongst us and died for us so that we don't have to worry about spiritual death. We may have to face physical death someday, but we don't have to worry about spiritual death. Thank you for this food and the memories that it makes in preparation and the joy of being outside. And we ask that you bless it to the nourishment of our bodies so that we may go out and, and spread your word and 
and share our joy with others. These things we pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, guys.